This video will be the ultimate free to play tips and tricks guide on how to progress and what to do daily. If you think this video is the bomb diggity, make sure to hit that sub button, hit the like button, hit that bell dingy dingy thing so you know when I post a video. Let's go, baby. All right, I think I finally fixed my microphone, so you should hear me loud and proud. Now this game can be overwhelming to some people because there is a lot to do, especially daily. I'm gonna give you the easiest, straightforward way to get everything done while progressing and having a goal. And really, it's just like reading a book going from the left all the way over to the right. First and foremost, let's start with your dailies, which is at the top left. Daily challenges, make sure to get every single one of them done. Daily rewards that you should not miss out on, they're very easy. Easy. You can literally hit go from here, but I'm going to show you a very easy way to do it. Just go through the menu, which is at the top right. Before we go through all this, once you're done with your dailies every day, push the story as much as possible. You want to get as far in the story as possible. This will unlock all the dungeons, everything else, all the rewards. Because then when you're done that story, you can move on to the other hero that you haven't chosen yet, which for me would be the tank or the healer. And then you can get more rewards doing their story as well. Okay, start with Karo's dungeon. It should be the first thing you do every day. If you're not working on a specific element, just do Hall of Magic. All of your heroes are going to need a ton of magic essence to awaken all the way to the max four stars take even more and if you're working on a five star you're going to be doing it for a while so if all else fails do hall of magic toa is next trial of ascension every day just try one floor or if you want you can do the auto progress function until you are a hard stop if you guys didn't know if you enter it and there's a little button here next to battle start and you can actually consecutively climb the tower next is path of growth now for path of growth all of the entries are for not individual dungeons it's all the same for each three so you can't do six of each one so you really need a goal and what you want to accomplish for that day if you're trying to level up your monsters do path of training and always do the path of training bonus for the day your goal is to at least get to level 11 because once you get to a level 11 it drops bonus shards for a nat 5. But don't ever not do the bonus because the bonus will drop rainbow mons and like all this other bonus stuff. Just don't, don't do that. If you do need runes, then definitely do Path of Adventure. If you want specific runes, definitely wait for the bonus day. Now let's talk about subjugation because subjugation is really important. This helps your summoner who's always on the field and there is a shop for the tokens that you get. This is mainly to do with crafting in the future. I wouldn't focus on crafting quite yet you can i'm not holding you back i'm just suggesting not to focus on it quite yet there's so much to do daily just be patient but with subjugation only do the bonus day as well you want to at least shoot for level five because that's when it starts dropping the bonus tokens which is for the shop i can't talk about expedition quite yet because i'm not to that act yet i haven't i haven't I've, i'm doing so much stuff right this is why i wanted to post this video there's so much stuff i'm just trying to compress it all in a very easy time consuming manner so when i can't be on the pc or can't be on my phone i can auto afk battle or do whatever i need to do but when i'm manually i have everything else done then I can do manual stuff like pushing the story. Yeah, it's kind of auto, but it's it's you gotta you gotta be clicking there. You gotta be there, right? And also, what I want to talk about next is party dungeon. Make sure to do your raids and rifts daily. You have one entry on each one, even the ones that don't really seem like the rewards are worth it. Like for example, for the first raid, Reed Hill, still do it because you get 15 breath of life. Every little thing adds up, and only it'll take like a minute, right? Let's talk about arena, free to play arena, early game do not focus on a defense we are here just for the shop points if you look at my defense i have me and i have one monster and that's because i want to lose i want to stay at a low rank and the reason i want to do that is because so i can just do quick battles non-stop quick battle is once you have way more combat power than the other person quick battle will come up and you can do a quick battle and it's just instant free to play you're not going to compete high rank i wouldn't even try for a long time until
until you get some stuff done in the shop because that's what we want to do is farm the shop in the shop which is at the bottom right here what you want to do weekly is for sure get the devil mon the devil mon will do a skill up for a nat 5 i would only save them for nat 5s and only focus on one nat 5 at a time for free to play come on if you're free to play you've been playing free to play games for a long time also side note if you have devil mons and you're leveling up some skills for some nat 3 or nat 4 when you hit auto select make sure it's not your devil mon that would be a big no-no from what i can see you can't like lock it or anything like that so if you feed a devil mon i feel so bad for you that's why i'm here to tell you don't do it i know i'm gonna do it i swear to god i, I know i am going to do it at least once maybe even twice in the same sit down session once you get the devil mon what you can do next is really just save until the next week or if you're in the summoning you can definitely get the legendary scroll once a month with the weekly arena rewards you could probably do that pretty easily again it's a four to five star we're probably getting four stars with our luck but if you don't want to take that chance what you want to focus on next is the outfit outfits i'll talk about in a different video just like crafting but every single outfit if you can get it as free to play you definitely want it because it does give you benefits to your monsters or your summoner however once you get your devil mon weekly and you get your outfits then you can if you're a collector you can get the rides but let's go into guild and talk about guild really quick make sure to be doing contribution request office make sure to do your three daily requests every single day hit up that wheel of fortune gets a free reward and just wait for guild wars baby guild shop save up for your light and dark scroll after that move on to the outfits go with the rides if you're a collector and those are the things you should definitely focus on for the guild shop now let's talk about some real quick free to play tips and tricks to go along after you've done all your dailies now once you've done your dailies and you push the story as far as you can or if you're just tired of a story, you can work on your guard journal. There's a lot of rewards here you can do. The adventure record, the area dungeons, monster story, which you should be doing with the events. And let's talk about the events real quick. Always be collecting these events. Obviously, the playtime reward is easy. Make sure to always go back to the seven days of special missions because I'm really on day four and I haven't even been paying attention the last two days. So I still need to finish day three. Easy, easy things to do. You get summons, crystals, runes gold all the rest of the stuff will be a red dot on your screen and obviously we all know as mobile players we gotta click the red dots field events make sure to be doing these as well there's one every hour except for like a two hour break and then all throughout the night on an east coast server they're really easy to do except for this stupid dance one which we need 300 people to do and there's never 300 people let's briefly talk about the shop for free to play really you shouldn't get everything that it says you can get it with crystals or whatever okay you can get this for the summoners chronicles you can get the very first one don't get the other ones they're they're not worth it i the amount of crystals you got to spend on it it's not worth it i would not spend the crystals on this growth ticket package and the dungeon ticket package you spend 500 crystals for 12 growth of tickets which is literally 12 entries same with the essence dungeon it's 12 tickets for 500 crystals i don't necessarily think that's worth it the first refresh is really 50 crystals and you get three entries i don't think you really need to technically do all these refreshes all the time there's other things to do in the game to get rewards and to progress the bag expansions definitely get both of these package one and package two the game gives you tons of crystals speaking of crystals only use crystals and refreshes do not use the crystals to summon you're free to play you should notice always get your daily free gift in currency don't ever buy gold and until you're really doing like professions and crafting a Un. the only thing i suggest getting on this is the chaos essence chest i think it's 200 crystals if i remember i, I can't remember but it's it's 50 materials for awakening this saves a ton of time and because Keros is on a limited entry and this is only once a week it's definitely worth the crystals all right it's nighttime. do you log off no you either download the game on the steam client or you plug in your phone to the charger and let it run because we're gonna do afk farming this is where the repeat quests come in if you have the tickets definitely do this you accept the highest level one it has the best rewards and you go and do it this will get you those breath of life which we are gonna need we need a ton now if you have zero tokens and you can't do the repeat request do you log 
Golgoth? No. You want to go to your creature book and you want to max out every single thing on this book because every single thing will give you rewards. Usually I kind of start out with like the, the, the elites or whatever, the highest ones, and then I kill it, it kills things around it, right? So you're kind of getting like double the money. Also put in some monsters that like you need to level up because they will slowly level up while you're AFK farming. Just make sure to bring one healer do not die. It's a waste of a night. Let's talk about runes. Only runes you want to level up in the two, four, and six slots are percentages, unless, unless it's in the slot two when it's attack speed. That is a good rune. Anything with a percent is a good rune. In one, three, and five, just make sure to have decent sub stats, not the flat stats. Depending on your progression, if you're just starting off and only have one star runes, don't even level them up. Just make sure that they have the set of two or the set of four once you have two star runes then you at least you can level them up to plus six at the most three stars you can go to plus nine four stars you can go to plus 12 and only if it's five star and above then you can start doing plus 15 just make sure they're good runes with good substats did you finally get a four star that you wanted and you want to focus on make sure to hit up altars blessing before you summon if you hit that up you can then select a nat four that you want to try to target the monsters in the blessing will have an increased summoning rate last but not least exchange pieces this is very important for the one star and two star pieces only do three star rabomon three star rabomon help evolve your three star monsters as free to play we're gonna have a lot more three star monsters than any anybody else that pays in this game if you're not really focused on evolving monsters or you don't have enough breath of life then use the one or two pieces on the breath of lives. For the three star pieces, only do it on the four star Rabomon. You could use it on the Breath of Life, but honestly, four star and five star resources are very hard to come by for free to play. Let the one star and the two star pieces be used for the Breath of Life if you need it. Save all your three star pieces for the four star Rainbowmon. And for the four star pieces, only the five star Rainbowmon. I wouldn't even use five star pieces on anything except for skill ups. You have every single element of every single five star of fire, water, wind, dark, light, and you don't need those shards anymore, then use it on the Rainbow Mon. And that is the end of the ultimate free to play guide, tips and tricks, daily routine. I hope this helps. And if you like this video, make sure to hit that sub button, hit the like button, hit that bell dingy dingy thing. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.